while we wait for folks, um, well, first of all, my name is Desha. I use she, they pronouns. Um, I am an urban farmer, um, grower, um, cook, uh, seed saver, um, you know, sort of many hats of things, food justice educator um, based out in New Haven right now for a short bit. Um, and I am really excited to be here with you all to talk about garlic. Um, garlic holds a really deep spot for me um, in my personal life, in my cultural life, in my familial life, in my political life. Um, so I'm really excited to be here in this way with you all. Um, next slide, please. Um, while we wait for some folks, I was hoping maybe we can just like, you know, open up the space a little. Um, this is the idea that I have for today. Um, basically, um, opening, I just wanted to hear a little bit about each of y'all, like what brings you to the space, what particular questions you may be holding around garlic growing, planting, harvesting, curing, all of it. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, outside of that, it's just going to be pretty straightforward, you know? Um, and then if there's any questions you have at the end of um, this presentation, I'm happy to answer it the best I can as well. And also just want to put out there that, you know, um, from what I'm told by Alec, at least, there's a lot of other community growers in the space. Um, so really just welcome your own, you know, contributions and shares and experiences in this process of growing as well. Um, Next, please. Thanks. Um, so I was wondering um, if you prefer to like unmute yourself or just write in the chat. Um, would love to know, you know, what your name is, um, which I can see from your little boxes um, and uh, pronouns um, or location, like whereabouts are you located? Um, that would be helpful in just understanding, um, yeah, what the growing season means. And then, yeah, what ways do you already use garlic? I would love to just know about that. How do you use garlic? How you're in relationship with garlic? Um, anything you want to share around garlic? Would love to hear that. I can start. <laughs> I'm Alec. I'm the community gardens organizer at East New York Farms. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. And I'm based in Brooklyn and Flatbush. And I use garlic in almost every meal that I cook. Um, I used to like mince it up really fine. And now I'm really into like chunks of garlic because I really like having like bites of garlic. Um, and then just last week, I planted garlic for the first time in, um, in my bed. Um, and then I put some straw on it. So we'll see, fingers crossed, we'll see how it goes. Hi everyone. So um, I'm Sam and I live here in Queens, so not too far from the farm. And um, I haven't had much experience growing a lot of things all together, but I definitely want to learn more about um, garlic. I've seen like the middle stage of it, <laughs> um, such as like picking out like the, the gar garlic scapes, but not yet part of the curing. So I definitely feel like I need to learn from A to Z. I had like planted a couple of um, garlic um, cloves um, a little bit last week, I think it was, but I still have some more that I definitely need to put in, find space to put in, <laughs> um, but yeah. Can I go? Uh, okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Suhair Hassan uh, from Nehemiah Ten Garden in East New York. It's very close to the UCC Garden. And I'm from Egypt. And we use garlic in almost all our recipes. So garlic is the main, you know. We use garlic and onion in almost all the recipes that we cook. And uh, I'm very glad to plant garlic. I didn't plant garlic before. So thank you very much and have a nice evening. <laughs> thank you, Sahar. So Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Desiree Johnson. I'm a community gardener at St. John Kansas um, Garden. I visit UCC very often. Uh, two years ago, I attempted to plant garlic. 
Um, I planted at the end of October, that was 2020, 21, um, around June, July, I reap and the bulbs were good. Last year, I planted around the beginning of November, around now. And when I reap, at the end, I mean, in some of this year, it was not much. I pointed it out to Alex, not Alec, on the Alex at the UCC garden. And I think she said, oh, well, you know, um, a lot of people garlic didn't do well this year. Mm -hmm. so I'm hoping to, with the bulb I'm going to get from Alec on Saturday, I'm going to try again and hopefully it would be good. As the earliest uh, speaker said, I use garlic a lot. Actually, I use it raw. It helps to bring down my blood pressure. I use it with, uh, with um, ginger and honey. I make like a little paste, like I sort of like grind it together and put the, <clears throat> put the honey. I got it in the fridge and I would take like a, a tablespoonful every morning or every other morning and garlic is very good. So I'm hoping to learn a lot this evening about the usage and the many benefits of garlic. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, am I muted, uh, unmuted? Can you hear me? <laughs> All right, hi, I'm, I'm Ina McPherson. I'm a gardener in uh, Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. And um, I've been growing garlic for many, many years. <laughs> Uh, as a matter of fact, we had our workshop uh, two weeks ago, our annual workshop on the farm. And so um, we've always had good harvest. I must say, we plant around end of October, early November, and we, we get many, we have garlic in all our gardens and we just love it. But you know, you never know too much. So I'm here to see what more I could learn. <laughs> but I, 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 I love garlic. I, I mince it. I put it in everything, even in my eggs. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm happy to be here and I hope it's a good workshop. I know it will be. It's going to be until eight o'clock, right? So you could cover a lot of ground. Yeah. Is it from six to eight? I think. Oh, it's till seven. Till seven. Oh, okay. Sorry, Ina, but we'll still make sure that it gets <laughs> Yes, thought, <laughs> but that's still a lot of time to cover a lot of ground yeah, yeah 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 we can move through it and i think we have one more individual that just came through um and hi we're just sharing our names um uh where we're calling in from and what is it that uh yeah we're just excited to um what ways are we already using garlic and what sort of like pre-existing knowledge um, you already carry about garlic that you may want to bring in. Um, and it's all good. You, I, I understand you just came through space, but it, I, I'm in the space. But if you want to like write that in the chat box, that's also welcome. Oh yeah, that's Sarah. <laughs> Hi, hey. I can share. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, I'm Sarah. I'm the compost program manager at East New York Farms. I don't have a ton of experience with garlic. Um, but we grew it on the farm last year and I had a bit of a hand in planting that and we're growing again this year. Uh, and I like to watch like time-lapse videos of garlic growing because I think it's really cool how it like sprouts and roots from the clove. Mm. Did I share everything? Yeah, you did. Thanks, Sarah. Um, and I think that's everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I wanted to first just start and uplift like what was already being shared and named in the space, whether that was coming up in terms of where folks are coming from, you know, um, but yeah, you know, there's so many stories to share around garlic. Um, garlic has been a part of, you know, each one of our traditions, I'm sure, um, for thousands and thousands of years, um, at least from what I understand, like garlic, you know, being back all the way up to like 10,000 years. And it's like first references were shown in I think ancient Chinese writings. Um, so I really see garlic as just like this, like, you know, citizen of the world, like a, like a cosmopolitan plant um, that shows up in so many cuisines. 
but it not only has like such a rich culinary tradition, I think it also shows up like really deeply medicinally. And I think it was you, Desiree, that was like speaking about that um, and all of its like medicinal applications. Um, and also from what I understand, there's also many ways that it's been used spiritually. I can't speak much about that because it doesn't come from my own culture, um, but I know that it's sort of like supported um, some cultures in that way. Um, and I think some really cool facts, especially since I know that there is like an Egyptian person in the house. Um, I know that like cloves of garlic were found in like King Tut's tomb that yeah. were like, ex excavated like in 1920s. Um, so I think it's really cool just be thinking about the ways that like garlic was in relationship, you know, even in that way. Um, and maybe, you know, more so here of like maybe why there was those two connections, but yeah, preserved garlic, garlic fragments, like, you know, like being able to find those in sort of like ancient caves and tombs, um, I think just like is suggesting to us that our ancestors have used, you know, garlic as a food seasoning, but also in many ways that it's been beyond that too. Um, and I think for myself, um, I think, yeah, I think garlic, there's many ways that shows up in such cel like celebratory, like special ways. Um, and I just want to like make sure that that's uplifted first. Um, but speaking for myself, um, as someone who comes from more of a South Asian background, um, I just want to also just like name that like there's ways that garlic shows up in a connotation that isn't sort of like, you know, sort of like positive as well. Um, if you look at sort of like Hinduism or like, you know, like sort of like strict Hinduism or like, you know, Buddhist scriptures, there is a way that like garlic and leeks and um, shallots are and onions are sort of like seen as like, you know, foods that are just like really heavy in heat and um, are often considered to be foods that are like for the poor or for the dirty or the generate. I mean, this is like actual text that shows up um, that names that. And um, I just want to name that like in India, for example, where the caste system is like present and live, um, this way of like culinary hierarchy shows up a lot in the ways that like Brahmins treat like Dalits, who are folks that are outside of the caste system and who are individuals that do depend on garlic as much as like other individuals within the caste system. So I just want to name that as a way of like, we love garlic, I love garlic. Um, but there's also complications in that and sometimes some ways that it shows up historically as well and also presently. Um, but now let's get into the stuff about planting. Um, so next. Um, so why do we, why plant garlic? Um, first start with the easiest, right? It's very easy to grow. Um, it is part of the allium family. So it's part of the onion family. Um, hold on one second. Is it possible to like mute? Um, everybody for a second I'm sorry there's like a sound that's coming through and I'm not sure where it's is it me or is it um thanks so much Alec uh yeah so it's part of like the allium family so like onions leeks shallots um so they're all related in that way so that's an important indicator to know of like where it is that you may be growing it if it is um the fact that you are growing it in garden beds, you know, um, where these other crops may have also um, existed. Um, garlic is really easy to grow. Like I said, you sort of just plant it, you know, this time of year, and then you sit around <laughs> for a long time and then you harvest it. Um, you have a wide window for planting, um, which is really exciting. So you can plant it anywhere from October. Um, I've planted it as late as November and December. Um, if the weather is mild, um, if you have noticed, like, especially here in the Northeast, when we were having those wild 70 degree days, probably not the time to plant garlic because there's, you know, obviously a chance that that bulb or the clove may sprout. And that's not what we're trying to do. So it is like helpful to have it during the colder seasons. And we'll get more into like what that framing looks like in terms of time range. Um, Again, I think it was Desiree that was talking about all of the incredible ways that garlic is used medicinally. Um, and yeah, like heart and, um, you know, like I think from what I recognize, and I think that there's so much more to say about garlic um, itself, but 
Um, it is really helpful for blood pressure and also high cholesterol. Um, and it also like is supportive to strengthening like your body's immune system and fighting fatigue. So I think the ways that you were sharing about having it um, in sort of like a, a form with like vinegar or tincture base or oil or pickled, like all of that is so supportive. And I know that like it also been, has been, you know, credited to like preventing some kind of cancers and increasing longevity and like regulating blood sugar levels and um, is rich in like vitamins um, A, B1 and C and also contains a lot of calcium as well, magnesium and iron. And I'm sure there's more to it, um, but I'm not in any way like a licensed professional to share that, but I'm happy to share along um, resources of um, more information that like tells you like how it's medicinally supportive. Um, double harvest. I think what's really exciting about the garlic that grows out here and that we grow in the colder climates is that there's actually two opportunities of ways that you can eat with it. In the springtime, there's something called scapes, um, which we'll talk about, but they're called garlic scapes. And I'll show you a photo um, later on in the presentation that really identifies what that scape is. Um, but it's basically just like an opportunity to like also, you know, like try garlic in its earlier form. Um, and uh, then you have the garlic bulb itself, which is the second harvest. So you have the scapes, which comes in sometime around the springtime. And then you have the garlic bulb itself, which is harvested around July or the summer, summer solstice. Um, another benefit of it is storage. Um, so like I'm hearing a lot of y'all folks are like, you know, based in the city like myself. So, you know, you want to conserve as much space as you can, you know, and get as much garlic as you can. And so garlic doesn't take up much space. Um, and so that's really helpful too, in that way. Um, and also last thing it's delicious. Uh, <laughs> And um, not only for us, um, but I think another way that it's actually helpful too, outside of the delicious element is that when you're trying to grow garlic in areas where, you know, you may be experiencing deers or squirrels or sort of like other, like, you know, animals that love eating what we grow, um, garlic is actually a really helpful deterrent in that way. Um, not only with pests, like, like aphids and beetle, like um, aphids and such, but also with sort of like deers and squirrels as I recognize it as well, which is something in mammals, um, which is something that I have to deal with where I grow. Um, so that's why. Um, now let's move on to what types of garlic. So who here has like heard about this? Because I know that this was a big deal for me when I first like was exploring garlic, but hard neck and soft neck. Does, do people here know the differences between that or even know that there is a difference. Okay. So I'm getting one sort of, okay. So hard neck. About that actually. <laughs> Say that again, Desiree. I said that's the first time I'm hearing about the different types. Yeah. Never knew this. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, I didn't know this either, but like in terms of growing, there is a difference. So there is hard neck and then there's soft neck garlic. My only experience of growing in the Northeast has been with hard neck garlic. Um, and so as you can read, you know, um, it's because it tends to be more cold hardy. And it's also popular because in these varieties, you're going to get a lot larger cloves and they're going to be a lot easier to peel. Um, and it's in the hard neck variety that you're also getting the scape, which is what I was telling you that comes out in the springtime. You don't get that option with the soft neck garlic. The soft neck garlic is what I have noticed you will find more so in grocery stores. So the garlic that we're finding in grocery stores is mainly coming from China or it's coming from California. Um, and the soft neck garlic just does better there because it's, you know, it, it, the climate is just milder and it's warmer and it doesn't bolt. So the scapes is what is the bolting process. That's not something that the soft neck garlic does. Um, so so th those are some of the, you know, the hard examples. Now you may be wondering, you're like, if I'm getting soft neck garlic, you know, at the grocery store, can I just use that to like plant, right? Like, can I just use a clove from that and plant it? Um, my suggestion would be one, like not do it because I don't think it would be suitable to this environment, like where we live. And then the other reason is that um, from... 
I think just generally, you know, I can't speak for all supermarkets, but, you know, most supermarkets garlics um, are going to, you know, potentially come from places where, you know, that garlic has grown with like mercury or lead or like some kind of arsenic that could possibly have been in the soil as well. Um, so I just like wanted to name that in terms of like growing possibility. So I imagine what Alec has for you available is probably hard neck, um, a hard neck garlic. Um, okay, so we can go next. Uh, it's kind of hard to see here, um, but here's the big difference. So if you can notice, um, uh, Alec, I see you have the pointer. Could you just point to like the scape and such of the hard neck garlic? Um, yeah, exactly. That umbel and the scape. That is the part that we, that is like that spring harvest that I was telling you about. That is basically what we want to, when you see that emerging in the springtime, that is what we want to cut down. Like right where, Alec, if you can just come down a little low, right there, you want to cut it right there. And then that scape can just be used as like a pesto, as a chutney. I just like to put it with olive oil, lemon, you know, just pulse it all up and make some kind of dip with it. But you can use it just the ways you use garlic. And it's much more of a softer taste, but something as part of this process you want to definitely be doing is cutting that. Because if you let these scapes grow in the process, then what that's going to do is it's going to be building a, like you see the top um, where it says umbel that umbel is basically going to then bolt into like a flower. And if we get to that point, then basically the garlic's plant itself is going to be putting all of its energy towards flowering and not towards then contributing to getting like a robust, larger bulb like we want um, from the hard neck variety. So that's basically like the big difference. And then the soft neck doesn't do that, as you can see. Um, and it's just, it's just softer in terms of like um, its stem too. Any questions so far before we move on? I know that. But these are just like the reasons why I'm trying to persuade you all of why we want to go for a hard neck garlic. Yeah? Okay, cool. So we can next. Um, this just shows you a picture of these are some of the garlics that I grew from this past year. Um, as you can see, like, look how large the cloves are. You probably get anywhere from four to six per um, and yeah, these are how they look like. These are some of the ones that I saved from the season before to grow back because I was like, oh, these are the largest cloves. I want to save the largest cloves for planting. And then I'll take all the other ones for then eating immediately and using for that season. Um, okay, we can next it. Um, how to source garlic. Oh, I... Um, ignore this, um, ignore this hard neck, soft neck thing. I've just forgot to delete it, um, delete that information, but we can still talk about how to source, um, how to source garlic. That's okay. Um, so yeah. So in terms of sourcing garlic, um, do people have like, a I like generally, it seems like folks have grown this before. Do you have like uh, places where, you know, you can get this garlic from if you need it? Um, and if not, that's okay too. Um, some of the areas that I find it helpful. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Ina. Are you about to yeah, say I, I was going to say, um, well, we usually get from, uh, East New York farms because we know they're a trusted source, but during COVID and, you know, it was kind of inconvenient. So I've been ordering from a dealer in California. Um, they're on Instagram, garlic gods. And they're a small firm, a small family-based um, growing operation. And um, they seem to be growing healthy um, naturally. And this is the second year that I've purchased from them. Also, Green Gorilla has purchased from them for us. So they're in a good source, we, we fingers crossed, yeah. Okay. But you have to be very careful because there are a lot of people growing out there and they're not growing healthy or organic they're using pesticides and so but this you can go on their site and you see they they take you through you see the farm how they harvest how they plant how they process it and um i'm i'm, I'm comfortable with buying from them yeah a little expensive but yeah so um, yeah 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 i found that too it's a little expensive i bought like organic garlic you know a pound of it and i think i spent like upwards to about 20 dollars on it so like um 
I think like, yeah, you can also, you know, it seems like you already have that in place, but like, yeah, try to find maybe like fellow gardeners that are willing to share even a head of garlic, right, with you from a variety um, that they have been saving or regrowing um, with like good results. Um, that's one way. And like, yeah, you can always order seed garlic from a seed catalog or an online seed vendor. I'm happy to also share as part of like, you know, my follow up with you all of some vendors that I like, you know, look to for garlic heads. Um but yeah, like you were saying, you know, just wanting to find reputable vendors um, that are like free of, you know, um, free of pests and any kind of pathogens um, whenever you're looking for that. Um, and yeah, you know, anytime that you're also looking at the garlic as well, you just want to see if there's any signs of damage or disease on it as well, because like a damaged garlic clove will not thrive, you know, and may not may rot before it produces like the bulb itself. So um, it's pretty easy to tell, you know, like if you see any kind of browning or like um, you'll you'll know that it's it's not something you'll want to put into the ground and feed the ground in any kind of way. Um, so we can go next and so when and how to plant garlic? Um, so when? It seems like ha have some folks already planted garlic yet for the season? It sounds like. Um, some folks still like, I want to get that in. Okay, so it's both. Yeah, so from my understanding, you know, like it should be done at least like around two weeks or so before the first frost of the season. Um, the way that I usually like you know, I don't, I don't keep track of like when that first frost is like, for me, I think of everything in terms of like, okay, what are the cultural things that are happening around these times? So like, um, the Vali is something that like, you know, my family celebrates and then, um, uh, Dia de los Muertos as well is something that is celebrated around that time. And so for me, it's like, okay, around this time is when I'm going to plant garlic. So that's usually my own indicator. But the idea is that, yeah, you want to be you want to be planting it before the ground freezes. Um, but you also want to make sure that it's cool enough outside that your garlic won't sprout, you know, too soon. So like I was saying that we had those wild November days, right? Just last weekend that like, I, I wonder if we had, you know, planted the garlic weeks before that time in October of how, how that would have fared well um, for that garlic bulb. Um, so I usually try to actually like wait until like the end. I'm like usually edging around that time um, for it, but that's usually my time indicator of like when I'm planting garlic. Um, but yeah, and then in terms of what type of soil, um, garlics prefer um, like soft um, sort of like loamy soil with like good fertility. So I basically like plant all of my garlic in like small raised beds that I have um, in my family's area. And um, I'll just put, you know, just a fresh set of compost in and I'll just like turn that in with whatever soil was there from the previous thing I grew in. And I haven't had to do anything more than that. As long as your soil has like well drained, you know, it has a good drainage. Um, and there isn't like, because that is basically would produce rot for the garlic, then you're good. Um, but that's basically it. It's very, very, I think, um, forgiving as a crop. Um, and I haven't had an issue with like needing to make sure that like, you know, my soil is at a specific like pH level and stuff, even though that I know what it like needs and stuff. But as long as you've given it a good compost, especially if it's like going to be on beds and stuff that you've been growing all season, then that's that that will be fine. Um, if you're going to do in pots, you know, again, just make sure that it has good drainage as well. But like potting soil should be fine for that as well. Um, in terms of, yeah, um, so uh, garlic itself, I've like prefers full sun, like from like the winter through the spring. Um, I wouldn't say that like where I have my garlic, it's getting full sun, like all day sun, but it's getting maybe half day of sun and it's done just fine. Um, so that's something that's been supportive for me. And then, yeah, in terms of fertilizer, I know that that question has sometimes come up of like, oh, should I add fertilizer throughout the year and stuff? I do not recommend it. Um, once you've just sort of put your compost and then, you know, the, the, the clove has gone into the soil, that itself will be fine. I've noticed that like, yeah, if you're adding fertilizer in, it may sort of stimulate like this vigorous growth that's early on that will be like, you know, that 
yeah, that will be like damaged when like winter weather sets in. I've known it. So, um, yeah. And then in terms of, uh, the planting itself, um, for garlic, um, like I said, you want to choose garlic. That's the largest clove possible. Um, so the cloves that basically will produce the largest bulbs with fewer cloves. So what, while like, if you have smaller cloves then they're just not going to produce large bulbs. Um, so the way that just a 101 of how garlic planting works is you're just basically one clove produces an entire bulb of garlic. So that's why you want to go for the largest clove that you can find to support that like larger bulb growth. Um, so the way that I basically do it is I'll have a bulb of garlic. I'll start to, you know, break it apart. I'll break the heads off. Um, and then I just want to make sure that I'm not breaking off of the skin of it, which is basically protecting the bulb from rotting. So that may be something, you know, like that's happened to me sometimes where I've like, you know, got into the skin and then I've put it in, but that's also produced like rotting down the line. Um, and then the way that you're basically planting it is that um, the tip of the garlic is going to go on the top and then the basil root end is what goes on the bottom. I see you're all like nodding your head. So I'm like, y'all know, y'all know, y'all know what's up. <laughs> Um, and like I said, yeah, if you don't have a lot of space, you know, you can totally put it into like, you know, containers will do fine. Just make sure you're leaving them outside in the winter. Um, for spacing, if you're doing it in beds and stuff, I've noticed that like putting each clove about two inches deep has been, if you're mulching it, if you're going to put straw or if you're going to put leaves or if you're going to put any kind of mulch or like um, compost over it, right, then two inches deep has been fine. But if you're not going to mulch it in any kind of way, then I would stick it deeper. So I'd probably put it about three to four inches in that case. Um, and then in terms of each clove, you want to probably separate it about six inches apart. Um, and that should be good. Any questions here on the planting process of garlic? The when and then the how to plant garlic. Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, we can next that. Oh, uh, just a quick time check. It's 6.35. Okay. Thanks so much, Alec. I think we're making good time. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So this is um, the growing of garlic, right? So now we're in the process, right? It's November time. We've put our garlic into our bed um, two inches deep or three to four inches deep, depending on how we did it covered up the soil, right? Mulched it, didn't mulch it. I would probably at that time, maybe give it a water once. But then after that, at least for myself in the five years that I've been growing garlic, I have never watered it. I have not watered it. Um, it's been okay with that, but I know that there's farmers out there that would recommend, okay, just watering it once a week. So I think like, I think if it's outside and if it's going to be like, you know, against like all the weather increments, if there's going to be snow that's going to be falling on it, I'm like, it's going to get, it's going to get, it's like, you know, sort of like watering in some way. Um, so now that this like garlic is in the soil, you've mulched it. And now we're just sort of like in the winter period has passed. Um, now we're in the spring cycle. So as spring comes right with spring comes a lot of weeds. Um, Something that I also think is a benefit of mulching um, is that you don't have to worry about weeds. Um, so something like I usually put about like, like um, right now, I just put leaves like the other day on my bed and I basically will just leave it like that until July comes around or however long those leaves be there, like are going to hang out there, but I won't really touch it in any kind of way. Um, but the you'll notice that in the springtime the garlic will start to emerge like soon from the soil um right when it starts to warm so it's really really like sweet just to see them like starting to poke out um of like the thick mulch layer a little and um yeah i think that at that point you're just like witnessing its growth there's nothing to do i think by the springtime if you want to start watering it small amounts that's okay um but again, like in, especially in the winter months, there's no watering that's needed. 
Um, I would say that if you want to do any sort of watering, you can pick that up from the springtime and only do it like once a week. And if you know it's there's going to be rain or like any kind of like, you know, precipitation, then just let it be. Um, but like, I would say like a light watering at the most, not like a good watering like we're doing during the summer months at all. Um, and then just remembering this time of year um, or in the springtime is you're going to get those garlic scapes, right? The photo that we were seeing of that, um, uh, of that like part of the plant, you just really want to make sure that you cut that off. That's very important to the growing process. Um, so yeah, this is for the benefit of you eating, but it's also for the benefit of you eating more later. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's a, definitely an important part of the spring. Um, and now we can next and go to um, the harvesting. Um, if there's any questions, yeah, just like shut them out. You can raise your hand or just unmute. Um, cool, Samantha. So um, the garlic that I had already planted is already sprouting. So I'm worried now that I'm like, okay, thank God I saved some and I didn't yeah. plant them. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to plant them now. But I was like, yeah. Are those like probably not good anymore? <laughs> yeah, they may. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, not. I mean, you can, yeah, you can see and like right see how far yeah. it gets you. Um, when did you plant them? Um, it was like, I mean, we did get a wave of like, you know, this past weekend, yeah. it was, like, you know, it got so warm. So before yeah. that, I guess like maybe a week and a half ago. I so wild, right? Though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can like let it be and see what it does from like an experience, right? Like I wouldn't pull yeah. it out or anything and just see what it does. Um, but I would probably suggest, yeah, go ahead and just plant more just so you can yeah. sure like be sure that you're gonna get garlic next year. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, that's great, but I was like, mm, I guess <laughs> I'm like, I guess it shouldn't have sprouted yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Um, thanks for that question. Um, yeah, um, so we can next, so we should be in um, harvesting mode now. So harvesting garlic is, um, oh, sorry, the one before, har yeah, there you go. Harvesting garlic is like such a joyous, joyous time. By the way, these are all the photos you're seeing here are of the youth that I get to work alongside of with. And so garlic growing, harvesting, storing, curing is like all such a joyous time for them and us. So um, I take a lot of pictures and um, yeah, they obviously did a really great job with like modeling how to do it. So like this here is Ish. Um, and as you can see, Ish is just sort of like grabbing it from like the 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 base, um, like just underneath where sort of like the leaves are. And he's just pulling it right out. Um, but you're like, how do you know, right? Like when garlic is ready. Again, what I love about garlic is that I really work with it in terms of just like just like the natural timelines of like what's happening. So in terms of the planting time, I usually plant it around Dia de los Muertos, the Vali time. And then in terms of the harvesting time, I tend to harvest it around the times of summer solstice. So that's usually like in July, that's when you'll start to notice that the bottom leaves are starting to dry. So that's a really good indicator. That's like, okay, all right. The garlic is like now, like, like telling me something. And this is also a good indicator of like, when, you know, I would, when you start to notice that drying of leaves and the browning of leaves is when you want to stop watering it. If it is that you are watering it any kind of way, um, because this is actually what forms the paper on your garlic bulb that protects it once you harvest it. So by July, the tops of the garlic that if you can see ish holding from the top, um, they will die back. And it, the bulbs is like, that's when the bulbs are ready to harvest. And I would basically just wait until after like a rain to really pull them out. Not, don't pull them out if it's like raining or if it just had rained or just wait until like the, the ground feels a little more drier for you to use it. Um, there's a lot of di different techniques of how people like to harvest it, but honestly, I'm like a person of minimal tools. And I think like, you know, like use our OG tools all the time and it's like hands work just fine. So I'll just get to the base of it, pull it out, and then just make sure I shake as much of the soil as I can off of the garlic, just so that can just, you know, go back, back into the land. Um, because for storing you, you won't need, you won't need like much soil, you know, like residue at all. Um, and yeah. And so 
Um, that's basically the harvesting part of it. It's really simple um, in that way. Um, and then let's go to the storing and curing part of it. So as you can see in this photo, um, we basically have all of them like lined up here on like a bread tray or a crate, right? Um, and this is like basically us taking it from the farm to now our greenhouse where that's where we're going to store them and cure them. So garlic should be cured um, to keep for like use um, for like any kind of like long-term storage. So first I would basically do is like brush off any of the soil that's clinging on it, right? I won't, don't wash the bulbs at all. You don't want water on it at all, right? And you, I leave the, le I leave the stalks and the roots on the bulb while they dry. So I don't really like cut off the roots. I don't really cut off the stalks at this point. I just like want to make sure the soil is out and I can just take it over to an area that is well ventilated, um, that's dry, that's a shady spot outside that can work too um, for it to basically just like hang out um, and cure. The one thing I would recommend is do not put your garlic to store right after you've harvested it in a sun, like a sunlit area where there's extreme amounts of sun that could come on it. Um, something that happens from that process is that it can change the flavor of the garlic, the fresh garlic. Um, but yeah, in terms of like the cleaning itself, um, there's a lot of sweet ways you can do it. I tried to put a video or photo in here at some point, but I wasn't able to. Some people will take like the stalks, um, the tops and the stalks of it, and they'll braid it and they'll make these beautiful braids that then they'll just like hang off of, you know, like at somewhere that's like, it can be outside, but as long as it's in a shady part outside that's well ventilated, it's fine. So if like for my family's place, because we don't have like that much space to, you know, like hold this kind of stuff, we just um, keep it in the garage. The garage is the best location for it in that way. Um, so we'll just hang it off of like the ceiling in the garage and have like string tides and stuff to it. Um, but yeah, I would um, basically like keep your garlic in like a cool area somewhat, you know, anywhere from like that's a dark place um, where, you know, it's just getting air circulation. So like braiding it, like I was saying, and you can just easily Google it to see how it looks like. But anyone that can do braids in their hair would be able to do braids on garlic um, um, or hanging garlic is a really good way to just keep it. Um, you can also. Yeah, I would. Yeah. So that's. um. As long as it's just like not in any way exposed to bright light, um, it's totally fine. Um, at our farm here, once we have kept it out on this greenhouse, the next thing we do after that is we'll cut the stalk and we'll cut the roots and we'll put that into like a mesh bag and we'll put it into like a cool dark area for it to just hang out. And that is still the garlic that we have kicking like today and that we just, you know, like use for culinary reasons and also used for like um, for planting as well. Um, but that's basically like this process is important to just ensure that you're going to get, you know, like garlic that is long term, not garlic that, you know, like rots um, really easily after using it. Um, we can next like coming to an end here. Um, so garlic seeds, like I have was saying, um, saving your own garlic is like super, super easy. I would basically at the point after it's cured, after like, you know, you've just stored it and it's dried up, um, you can just basically save all of the largest cloves um, and keep those, or I, I usually just save the largest bulbs and I'll keep them separate. And those are my garlic seeds. And any of the smaller bulbs is what I'll then use for culinary reasons, le re, um, reasons or something else. Um, but that's basically it. Um, in terms of garlic seeds, if you're not using your own, I think Fedco, um, has really great garlic seeds, um, high mowing company. Um, it also has really great garlic seeds and garlic gods, which is the one that, um, you know, had recommended, um, as well. Um, but that you can usually order around like August time. Um, that's usually when I've noticed that, um, the companies will start to sell them. Yeah. Um, and the last slide that I have is one recipe. 
um, for folks who may not have used. It seems like you have a lot of recipes for garlic itself, but this is just a really simple recipe for the scape. If you're like, what do I do with this thing? I know when my family started to like grow garlic here, they're like, dish, we don't know what to do with this garlic scape. So this was like one easy pesto solution um, that we had learned from some people here um, of how to incorporate that. Um but I'm again, this was just like, I ran out of time for my own planning, but I'm happy to send you more recipes and ideas of what can be done. Um, that's a little more creative, but yeah, that's kind of all I've gotten garlic for today. Um, I also want to just like save time for any questions that y'all have, um, anything that maybe I missed any sort of clarifying, um, you know, ways that I could clarify some things that I brought up. I'm happy to hold all of that in the next 10 minutes for the next 10 minutes. Thank you so much. Yes, Dusha. Uh, this is Desiree. I always thought that when I see the scape, it's time for me to pull the garlic out. And I know that you've clarified this. You know, I'm happy. I'm happy to know that, you know, that comes out in the spring. Yeah. I can use that. I can just clip it off and then just leave the garlic as is until July, you know, until midsummer. Yeah. Yeah. Not important aspect of this. I never heard about the two types of garlic the hard neck and the soft neck and yeah. i glad to clarify that because now i understand actually i hear buying garlic in the supermarkets that got um where it's being produced of course in china i avoid that as you said we don't know how they grow the garlic over there it can be in soil that is contaminated with lead with sword you know and I rather grow my own garlic, but I'm glad you pointed that out to me that the type that we find often in the supermarket is the soft neck. So that gave me more reason to, to you know, to be determined, although I mean, we're in what? We're in mid-November now. So if I, if I get my, my bulb um, from um, Alec on Saturday, I'll try to put that down. I usually put it in the soil, at the community garden, but I've been putting it in big pots in my my garden at the back. So now I think I'll put it in the soil when I get it from um, Alec. Um, thank you, Desiree. Um, I'm yeah. This this is. Uh, I'm glad that there is now opportunity for you to continue your relationship with garlic. Yeah, past this past escape stage. That is. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, I think like for myself too, right? Like I think when I was sharing about like in terms of supermarket garlic and whatnot, like my understanding is a lot of it grows, you know, in these places, but you know, the sort of like in California and China in this way, but sort of the the problem around contaminated soils and, you know, all the ways that lead and pathogens and all of that play out can happen in so many places that are even beyond that, right? Like there's so much we don't know about our um, grocery store food and crops in that way. But um, yeah, yeah. But thank you. Um, thank you for sharing all of that. It was really helpful. Um, any other questions? Yeah, Sam. So um, I think I'm going to experiment. So I don't know how much space I have on my um, garden beds right now, just because I'm growing a lot more like brassicas and just like lettuces. And I'm going to try to keep that going for as long as I can. Um, that being said, I don't know how much space I have in, in the garden beds, but I do want to try um, container gardening yeah. for the ones that I do have. And potentially I just like, maybe I'll go pass by and also get some more, like an extra um, head to also plant those as well and see how those go. But how would you recommend, I know you said six inches, right, apart, when it's in the garden better or when it's into the soil yeah but in container gardens like how maybe should I space them in there or like yeah I would definitely space them like yeah do you like are you what's the what's the sizing like or the general so is it yeah yeah, um, well, I have two raised beds in back and those are kind of just occupied right now with yeah. what I'm already growing. Um, so I was thinking of, I don't know, it, doing them in pots. Do you think they'll grow well in there? 
they'll be fine as long as you keep them outside and they're yeah. getting the sun they'll be fine um I've never personally done it that way just because like you know I'm I'm growing so much more of it but I see as long as the soil is meeting you know its needs and mm-hmm. it's getting like the sun and you're like mulching it it's fine it should be fine yeah so um I probably clove per like maybe one clove per like like what size pot? pot like what yeah, size I don't know. I, I have a lot like a lot of variety so yeah as as, like, pot sizes so I'm like maybe like if it was like one per like four inch that should be fine pot. and then if I had like maybe a six inch I can try to squeeze two maybe yeah I, yeah I mean I've noticed like it's hard to tell but like like honestly like the bulb is not good it's not going to be yeah. larger than this <laughs> yeah you know more or less and then it's just yeah um so it's really just going to be like the way that the stalks grow up that are going to take space. So mm-hmm. I've noticed that you can actually grow it pretty close to each other. Um, another thing is like, if you have brassicas and things like that too, there is an option of you growing it around it too. Yeah. Like in between yeah. probably, right? Yeah. 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 You can just, and then that way, what can be cool about that too, is that like for the summer season, when you want to grow like tomatoes or something like that they actually complement each other really well and mm-hmm. they'll actually like they'll companion plant well and they'll actually support with like you know like like driving off different kinds of pests that are tend to be attracted to to it so it yeah. could be you could think of it in that way too like of like yeah. you know, just growing it where the brassicas are just make sure that your um your uh compost like you're adding new soil compost yeah. it's actually if you've got brassicas going which I'm sure have had a long season yeah that's yeah. true Okay. Yeah. I'll try some of those too. Yeah. Putting it yeah. in. The- Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Uh, can I also suggest that uh, Samantha and uh, you're considering a pot. I think it would be better to use like a deep window box mm. because that sort of simulates a raised bed. If you're using a round pot, it would be, it will get very tricky with spacing, but if you use a window box, you could do the two, four inch down yeah. and six inches apart. And when you're, you know, then you don't have to worry about competition from so much weeds because weeds don't really thrive that much in a, in a box, in a pot. Yeah. And the spacing is much better and you'll have just a lovely window box of garlic fronts. Yeah. I appreciate up. the suggestion. Yeah. 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 I'll look into that too. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thanks for that tip. That was helpful. Yeah. Um, I guess I didn't talk about, there's a lot of different types of hard neck varieties like when you go on the website you're going to notice that there's like yeah 10 15 different you're like which ones to start you know which ones to use I can tell you the ones I've used that I've really liked and that have just been really promising and easy um one variety is called music um mm. and this one is like just like a hardy variety um it has like a really silky white exterior with like purple undertones it's really beautiful um what I like about it is all of its bulbs tend to be really large so you're probably getting about like four maybe five cloves per and it's really dependable in most climates like it's really dependable um and then in terms of flavor I'd probably say that it has like yeah like I wouldn't say it's like spicy and like high pungency or like super, super strong, but it's like a medium, like toned flavor in that way. So I think that it could be versatile for a lot of different reasons. Um, But I know other ones that are really popular are Spanish Roja. That's another one that shows up. And that's like one of the most popular hardnecks I think that you'll see um, out there. And then there's like a German blend. And then, um, yeah, those are the three that I would definitely say. And then there's an Italian hard neck that's really popular. Um, and yeah, music, German, Spanish Roja, Italian hard neck are just some of them. But if you go on these like seed catalog, like or online, like, like just websites, they'll give you like a flavor profile. They're like, mm-hmm. okay, this is how you can use it. This is what the flavor, you know, undertones are and so on and so on. But I'm just giving you an idea of the ones that I have done zero effort in growing. Like it's basically been the land that's taken care of it. As long as I've given it its basic needs, it's been fine. And it's been with these varieties. I'm planting a variety from Uzbekistan called Persian wow. Star. It's amazing. Persian star. It's from Uzbekistan, Eastern Europe, right? 
Did you get that from so garlic nuts? I got that from garlic nuts. They have so many varieties. Last year I planted uh, a Korean hot spicy uh, species. It's called Korean hot and that sold out very fast. But they have yeah. they have so many varieties. It's it's really and garlic nuts. Yeah, I mean, you go on their web, go on their website. It's a family, wife and husband and the kids. Wow. <laughs> they they have this huge operation. I, I forgot where they're in the Midwest somewhere, but they actually walk you through the process of you know the tractors. How are they harvest? Sometimes they harvest by hand. Oh my god. And everybody's. Uh, I think even the grandparents help out. It's, it's a very small operation and mm. they're really, you know, kind of, they yield to the earth and to really best practices from what you could see. Cause it's like an open process. They show you everything. And you can actually speak to the, the, um, the wife who runs the operation. The husband is in operations and she's like in the back office and she really gives you a lot of um, tips on, and they ship also when, um, it's time for planting and they give you a, a timeline and um yeah they're they're very good operations I, they sell culinary oh um, wow I'm looking, at the, <laughs> I'm looking at the colors they're, it's like yeah. purple. the garlic is purple it's uh, amazing I'm, I'm so excited <laughs> to see this persian star what it's going to be like it has purple wow. undertones and the history behind it it was found um, they stumbled onto it uh, from a farm stand in, uh, in this place. I don't even know where Uzbekistan is. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, um, so, uh, wow. Yeah, like, yeah, they're a little pricey, but um, they, have, they have so much varieties and they sell out very fast. You have to, I'm noticing that. The only have ones to, they have yes. available now are the chestnut and- Chestnut the- red, chestnut yeah. red, and yeah. And, but uh, Green Girl is just, uh, they got for us um, the uh, Italian flavor, forgot uh, an Italian type and the Persian star. And we got like three kinds of chestnut red. So, wow. you know, I'm planting garlic tomorrow. You have until Thanksgiving. That's the, that's my deadline. That's your deadline. The, the week of yeah. Thanksgiving after that. And because yeah. it starts getting really cold yes. and you really want, because cold is very important in, in developing hard neck. You need yeah. uh, at least three months of really cold weather so the bulbs can form yeah. and um, the weeds won't thrive in the cold because weeds are the nemesis of garlic. And, and also Do you, you may mulchurous? not- Do you mulch yours um, as well? Yes, I do. I use leaves and I use, so we raise chicken. So we have hay with manure. Yeah. And, and also as a defensive tactic because of urban um, situations with rodents and stuff, mm-hmm. we plant through uh, chicken wire. Oh. After, after, and I've been doing that for years now. I harvest it. It's on our web, it's on our web page. Uh, it, the, the, act, the garlic actually grows through the chicken wire and it harvests through the chicken wire. It goes the entire season. And the, because when you plant and you go back the next week, you'll see that there's been some disturbance, either squirrels or rodents or birds or whatever. But once you, you, you put, put the garlic in, you mulch it up with the hay and you put the chicken wire down and you fast it in every corner with rock, rocks or bricks or whatever, it stays there, no mm. disturbance, mm. yeah. And it actually, it's amazing. It grows through the chicken wire. Nature finds a way. Yeah, they find a way. Yeah, yeah. And that's the best way. Because a lot of people say, how do you grow with rodents? I said, they don't, they don't come because they, it disturbs their little paws. Yeah. They, they can't go through the chicken wire. It's, they just, yeah. yeah, they touch every other bed that's dormant during the time. And um, they stay away from the garlic. So we have had um, really good success. All, all our gardens, we have four gardens and every garden grow garlic. <laughs> <laughs> and this is very good. I learned one thing tonight was yeah. that once I harvest it, I usually put them out on a tray in the sun because yeah. I have full sun in, uh, in all our sites. And so, but it didn't really noticeably affect the taste. But that's a good point. It's a good point it, it, because um, when you're curing it, I, I usually cure it in my basement yeah. or in the shed in the garden. Yeah. And so, yeah, next time I will take it out of that sun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's good for it's like yeah. hard to find that sometimes when you're in the summertime. 
but yeah 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 Yeah. um any other questions any other like last thoughts um oh disha um when can we expect for the first like little sprout to come up when is springtime right time for that springtime yeah springtime um in a, I, if you have like a more specific like point um, to right. share around that timeline, but I have noticed well, usually when you just start, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Garlic takes nine months to, to yep. from planting to harvest, like a human being, nine months. So you count it back. So like uh, early spring, you start seed sprouting. Yep. And, and if uh, Samantha, I, you mentioned that yours is already sprouting, push <laughs> them back down, just poke them back down in the ground and mulch it up. Oh yeah, you know, that's some, a good yes. Idea too. Push it down, just poke it back down, mulch it up. Yeah, around springtime you start starts peaking up, and um, and then you know like <laughs> mid spring, late spring, then it starts to you know really frond out, and then the last stage is the, the scapes, and then you've got to get the scapes in time because they come up overnight. They do. They come up overnight. You could and, be there one day yeah. and the next morning. <laughs> and they <laughs> siphon the flavor from the bulbs. You have to, you can't. So that's the tricky thing about community gardens because if you're not there every day, you the scapes are allowed, they flourish and they start siphoning because that's the last yeah. stage of development. Yeah. Is when the scapes come, it's telling you the bulbs are developing and they're ready to be harvested and it's crucial. So you have to really get rid of those scapes so they can get that last burst of energy so they can fully develop yeah yeah so it tells you everything it tells you when to harvest it the leaves start getting brown and they start bowing and <laughs> it, it, it's it's really easy to go it's not complicated yeah, it at all it it, it's you know and, and not a lot of care just do the basics you know mulch it up so the weeds the weeds the weeds are what uh is this it's the it's a nemesis of garlic is they don't thrive. Weeds and garlic do not thrive. So you have to weed by hand. You have to pull up those weeds by hand. So it gives the garlic a chance to really, you know, get energy and develop fully and flavor. Yeah. And uh, yeah, grow. my niece is only nine years old and she planted garlic in a pot. She planted, she, she planted, and I never, I never planted in a pot. She said, Etina, and she's only nine years old. She planted garlic in a pot in, in cool. Pennsylvania and, and they got harvest. That's beautiful. So it's, it's, it's very easy. It's, yeah, it's not, and it's also it's, such a communal effort. Like I, I just yes. find so much joy doing it with other people and really marking it as like a celebration, whether it's like the planting of it and the harvesting yes. of it. So I really do welcome like doing that with other folks as well. There's something yes. really yes. beautiful about doing that kind of like long-term commitment, you know, like, uh, or at least like building that sort of like hope into, into something that's forthcoming um, from nine months from now. Um, it's a great tool to build community. We tool. have a it's party a around planting it and a party oh, around harvesting it. I'll have to come sometime and like learn. Yes, from please you. do, please do. <laughs> next year. Yes, yes, next year. Mm -hmm. but um yeah if there's um no other questions um I do have to head out unfortunately or else I would just like hang out here and hear all these stories but (laughs) thank you all so much um for being here um I learned so much with you all too so thank you thank you so much this is very good it's very informative Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining Good us. Good luck, yeah. everyone. Excited for your like garlic game next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. Oh, thank yeah. You. Oh, and to um, if you want to pick up your garlic um to plant, um, I guess I can reach out to y'all your emails um that you registered through Eventbrite, um, and also this Saturday at noon on the farm we're having a hands-on like cover cropping workshop um and then you can also um go home with a little packet of cover crop seeds to use so um Um, send you all the link for that as well yeah just to plug that person is an amazing educator truly recommend it um (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
Thank oh, yeah, you. the variety is elephant garlic. But elephant garlic. Oh, wow. Ah, big, big yeah. I, I, plant, I planted wow. those once. Only so once. giving yeah. New York. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'll see All you right. on Saturday, Alec. Bye, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Alicia. <laughs> Thank you. It's beautiful. Yeah. Now, like, if they have any questions, feel free to field them to me. I'm happy. Like, or send. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good, Good night, night, everyone.